All right, take three. Hi, everybody. <laughs> My name is Laura, and welcome to Book Bubbler. Um, I have a doubled up Friday reads for you since last week. I didn't post anything, though I did film, and I also filmed a mid month book bash vlog last week as well. However, my phone died, and I don't know if any of the video clips I took in the last few days before it croaked um, saved. They should have. I just haven't looked into it yet. So here's what you have for now. <laughs> Sorry about that. Also, enjoy Midsummer in the background. This is season seven, episode, I'm going to say four. It's called Sins of Commission. Um, I am re-watching it from the beginning again. Thanks to Danny. It's been nice because his idea. She is like two or three seasons past me at this point. So but whatever. It's fine. Um, yeah. Okay. So let's talk about how much I'm not reading. But first, let's do some songs of the week. So last week, I picked um, something off of the spa station. Apologies if you can hear that very loud truck on the road outside my house. Um, it is 10 p.m. Don't know what that's about. Anyway, uh, it's, this is by Hilary Stagg. He is a wonderful, wonderful harpist. This is called Heaven on Earth. I forget the album name. I apologize. It's got a whale on the cover. I think all of his stuff has marine life on the cover. But anyways, I really like this song. It's really relaxing. Um, I enjoy his work very much. So enjoy some Hilary Stagg. And then for this week's Song of the Week, because I it's just been pretty much a blur, um, I went into Spotify, into my liked songs. Shot for the Middle was Ella Fitzgerald. <laughs> so I just picked one of her songs, which is hard to do. I just got distracted for about 20 minutes listening to parts of her songs. But I'm going to go... Um, our Love is Here to Stay by Ella Fitzgerald. So kind of fun. It's slow in the beginning, picks up in the middle, and then slow at the end again. I like when songs do that, when they change tempo. So enjoy some Ella. It's never a bad day with Ella Fitzgerald, right? <sighs> okay, so for the one book that I read in the last two weeks, and I read it over ebook, though I do have a physical copy here, so it counts. <laughs> <laughs> it counts as physical for me. So here we have the start to a series, of course. And it's a romance, of course. This is by Eloisa James, the start to the Essex Sisters series. This is Much Ado About You. I'm trying to get without a glare. Here we go. Um, so this one sets up the premise for, I'm assuming, the rest of the series. So Tess is our main girl here. Tess is 22 or 23 older, um, and she's the oldest of four girls. Their father has recently passed away. Their mother passed when Tess was, I think, 12 or something. She's been gone for at least 10 years now. And now their father's just passed. Um, he was horse crazy, horse mad, racing, breeding, everything, just horse crazy. They're, they lived in the wilds of Scotland. I don't know if they ever sit best if I wear, but they lived in Scotland and um, very, very poor. So the girls' dowries are one particular racing horse each that's all they have no money nothing else so on his um, death the girls get sent to live with guardianship that's what it, they have a guardianship with the duke of holbrook who is friendly with her father he'd met him a few times no one is sure why exactly he was chosen out of other people her father their father didn't have a lot of friends but whatever so they go down to england the four of them to stay with their new guardian and all of a sudden he has to become this chaperone for these girls and the youngest is I think 14 or 15 uh, so there's like 10 year age, di age difference some are in school some are not um, so he's trying to set them all up with good marriages and of course Tess being the oldest she tries to make the best marriage possible highest ranking to set the standard for her sisters no one knows who they are really because again they're Scottish and relatively poor <laughs> speaking so um, Tess makes a very decent match, and um, I liked all the characters in here. I liked how everything was set. I liked the pacing. There's enough backstory to get you going, and then as you're going through, um, she's dropping in enough information at the right times about horse racing, about the girl's father, and about Tess and what she thinks, and other things. I mean, it's very, very well paced, and I really enjoyed everybody in this book. Um, the characters who were kind of odious were appropriately odious. The ones who were nice were nice. The ones who were smarmy were smarmy. Like, that's not always the case with stuff like this. So I really enjoyed this. I really liked Tess. Um, 
there was a lot of tension. It goes where you think it will, of course. I mean, it is a happy ending. It's a romance. It's not a spoiler. Um, who she ends with is spoilery, so I won't say anything that like that. But one of her younger sisters does run away with a man. And <laughs> that's a bunch of drama. And the Duke of Holbrook, who is um, the guardian for these girls, he's perpetually single. He doesn't want a family. doesn't want to get married. He's, the, he's always a little bit tipsy. He likes brandy, but he's very good natured and up for the challenge and happy to have a family with him in the home. So it's really a good match. And this was very enjoyable, a lot of fun. I look forward to reading the second in this series, which is called Kiss Me Annabelle. So they all have Shakespearean titles and I don't know why, I don't know enough of Shakespeare's plays to know the, like the plays, so to speak, on what happens in here with what happens with the plays. I haven't read much to do about nothing in a very long time. So regardless, this was great. I gave it four stars, very happy to get back into that. So I'm going to ramble a little bit now, but if you're just here for the books, thank you for watching. Um, hopefully I will resume some semblance of um, regularity soon, but no promises. So there you go. Okay. Everyone else who has stuck around. Hi. <laughs> I'm filming this at 10 o'clock at night because I couldn't be arsed to do it any earlier, quite frankly. Um, the last, the last week and a half, has been spent, all of my free time has been working on Danny's baby shower. Danny, again, from Spinelli Speaks. So um, her mom was the host. She asked me to co-host um, just over a month ago. So that's been taking up really all of my free time um, ever since then. So Jenny and I have our business and then I have my massage business and everything else has been baby shower all the time. Um, so working up to it the last week, of course, is the busiest and it involved a trip or two up to the shower location which is like 45 minutes from my house so they're in back a couple of times working on things and um they're early the day of the shower which was this past sunday it was really really nice it looked lovely i think everyone had a very nice time we had great food and she got lots of wonderful presents and everything was just really nice but I, it was such a blur quite honestly such a blur because it went by so fast it was the five of the fastest hours honestly I've spent in a long time in my life um, and then the drive home I was just sort of in a daze and Monday I um, Monday I had off ended up running around everywhere my phone died I didn't know if texts were going through or anything Tuesday I had to work in the morning which is great and then I thought I would run two errands and then be home in plenty of time for Danny and her husband to come to my house and pick up all the gifts because of course like everyone's car was loaded with stuff on the way home so my car was packed with diapers and presents so they were down here for something else and they wanted to stop and it was wonderful to see both of them and I thought yep I'll have plenty of time I'll work and I will pick up these two things and no problem well everything was a pain in the butt like everything took forever I had issues with the new phone for turns out no reason whatsoever I spent more than I wanted to spend like it just everything just sort of went to hell in a handbasket <laughs> and um it's very indicative of the last few weeks quite honestly it's just a blur it's overwhelming I am constantly feel like I'm tapped out all the time and that's all on me that's all on me um so yeah Tuesday was the worst <laughs> um yesterday Wednesday I didn't do a whole ton I just couldn't I tried to do a lot of stuff and I just couldn't and then today I was going to do all the things. I was going to wash all the clothes and catch up and everything. And instead, I ordered pizza at four. I took an hour and a half nap in the afternoon. And I have been watching Community and now Midsummer the rest of the day. Like, what a bum. I also realize I beat myself up a lot. So there is that. Um, so what does that mean for what's going on in my life now. Um, I have off again tomorrow, Friday. I fully intend to not do anything. I have to work Saturday. I've got two clients. Um, so I am hopeful that I will get my brain back enough to start reading again. All the reading I have been doing is just on my Kindle at night before I fall asleep. It's usually maybe 10 pages before I'm out. So nothing's really getting read. This has been a very, very slow reading year and slower than usual for me by quite a lot. So I am hopeful that I will get my brain back 
and be able to concentrate more soon, I'm hopeful that I'll be able to catch up on house stuff because most things just got ignored in the last month just to try and keep up with all the ideas and the work and everything else. So yeah, we'll see, right? I've, I'm hopeful, I have good intentions, but also I'm tired. <laughs> My brain is kind of done. So I wanna push, but not too much, so yeah. I have missed everyone's booktube for the last few weeks. Um, just one or two here and there. I don't know what anyone's going doing with anything. I apologize for that. I feel so out of loop. I'm so sorry, but I just, I don't know. So that's me. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to go. It's late. I'm going to go see who died and what the storyline is here on Midsummer behind me. I just heard what I think is an explosion. I don't know. I'm not looking. Also, I hope there's no nudity back there because I have no idea. <laughs> and if so, sorry. I don't know what to tell you. Um, yeah. Okay. Hope you've all been doing well and um, staying healthy. And you are all reading something wonderful all the time, always. And if not, that you can ditch it without guilt. And yeah, I will hopefully be back here soon. Who knows? All right. Bye.